Hello, hello everybody, it's your old pal Tuna here and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Tuna, I'm an illustrator and comic artist from Canada, and today I want to tell you all about a big project that I have coming up that I am very excited about. So how did I just introduce myself? I said that I was an illustrator and comic artist, and something that I've been reflecting on recently is the fact that I actually haven't made a comic since 2021. If you have attempted to make a comic, or even if you've ever seen a comic, you're probably aware of just how much time and effort it takes to complete something as big as that. And if you've ever watched any of my other videos, you might know that I am a busy, busy bee. So obviously, I have not had time to make a comic in these last few years, and I just don't feel very good about that. I'm like, should I even be calling myself a comic artist at this point? I have illustrated three graphic novels in the past, as well as multiple short stories. <laughs> but if I'm not actively doing comics like is that a big part of my identity? And so I was doing a little bit of soul searching and I realized I do want comics to continue to be a part of my identity. So <laughs> that led me to decide to prep a comic for an upcoming comic festival here in Vancouver. I was admitted to the Vancouver Comic Arts Festival. It's my favorite convention here in town and I didn't want to show up empty handed without a new piece. So let me tell you about it. So before I get into what I'm working on right now, I feel like I need to catch you up to where I am <laughs> because this isn't just any comic. I I am developing part of what I consider to be my magnum opus. I feel like every creative person kind of like has this story that they've had with them for years and they're just waiting until they have like the resources and the time and the skill to actually see it through. And my magnum opus is called Space Case. It is a sci-fi comedy featuring my two characters, Tuna and Yo. Yes, I know that the character and my name are the same. Rest assured, it is not a self-insert. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> Tuna and Yo are interstellar orphans who have delusions of grandeur and fancy themselves heroes. They love to help people out as they travel the universe, but they're mostly interested in reading comics and eating snacks. The structure of this story is more like serialized capers. I basically mirror the stuff that I grew up watching, like Star Trek The Next Generation and episodic cartoons. So the idea is that each comic, each whatever is a self-contained, little adventure story. My two biggest inspirations when coming up with this story are Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where I kind of base the whole like traveling through space. They're like hitchhiking, you know, it's kind of like part of the vibe. And Paper Mario for the comedy styling and the writing. There's just if you grew up a Paper Mario kid, you know exactly what I mean. I also feel like Gigi DG, who's another comics creator who was doing a webcomic called Cucumber Quest for a long time, they were also super heavily inspired by Paper Mario. And I feel that when I saw them quote that as an inspiration directly, it like gave me permission to also use that as an inspiration directly. But technically, if we go all the way back to the beginning, that's not where Space Case started. So the truth is Space Case actually began as a visual, which is to say my avatar on Gaia Online. Now, <laughs> if you haven't heard that name in a while, Fair enough. I do identify as an old at this point on the internet. So Gaia Online is this like avatar forum based game and where I spent all my time was in the art shops and you can go watch my like freelance history video to explain the impact that that had on me as a young person. But one of the things that I did was I designed my avatar to look this specific way and then I just like never changed it. I just decided that that was my look. People kind of like recognized me from my avatar, you know. And it became iconic and I would commission people in the art shops part of Gaia Online to illustrate the characters in my avatar. And over time, like I probably, commissioned hundreds and hundreds of drawings of these characters, I decided to develop a bit of story and a bit of lore behind them to add a little bit of flavor to the illustrations people were doing. So if I was like, hey, will you draw my avatar? They're space adventurers. Then, you know, it just inspires the commissionee to be a little bit more creative with what they draw. <laughs> and I forgot to mention that the reason that the characters are named Tuna and Yo is because my username on Gaia Online was Tuna Yo and yep. One of them's tuna, one of them's yo. <laughs> now, I'm not really sure where the jump went from like, these are my avatar characters that have a little bit of a backstory to this is like a comic that I want to tell the story of. But I've been drawing comics since I was very young. I was always inspired like, 
in each era of my life, there was like a different type of comic that was keeping me going. <laughs> and while I knew what these characters were all about, going on little space hijinks, it really changed over time exactly why they were doing that <laughs> and what their motivations were. But it was originally called The Cosmic Insignificance of a Fish and a Frog, which is obviously a bit of a mouthful. The second name was Don't Panic in direct reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. In fact, I have Don't Panic tattooed on my arm. That's how much it means to me. And it wasn't until I was like 19 or 20 when the space case name landed and that is what stuck. By the time I was 19 plus, I really don't remember the exact timelines. I'd written a ton of little short hijinks for them. And I have in fact completed two short stories of space case before. Here they are. This one was completed in, I want to say 2017. And this one was completed in 2018. They're both self-published, just little short things. Both of these two were co-created by my ex-partner, my partner at the time, who is a writer, and he was helping me to kind of like bring bring it over the finish line as it were and he wrote the script for the first one and for the 2018 one we wrote it together and the 2017 one was more along the lines of like the beginning of a longer series where it ends on a cliffhanger so it wasn't exactly the short story caper style thing that I wanted to do and if I'm totally honest I actually have a problem with independent comics and even mainstream comics that do not tell a contained story in a volume because here's the thing, comics are hard and a lot of the time people don't follow through on the part two or maybe part two happens, but by the time the end is in sight, you know, the project gets dropped. So it's a personal philosophy of mine to avoid having any cliffhangers or anything like that because I want people who read my story to feel like they got a complete thing. So anyway, that's what the 2018 one ended up being. And I still feel so proud of the 2018 comic. It is just like, it embodies everything that I wanted Space Case to be. I'm really happy with the illustrations even to this day. And I always felt that if Space Case never went anywhere after the 2018 edition that I could feel like I had completed what I set out to do with these characters in this world. But as luck turned out, in 2022, I actually signed Space Case with a comics publisher to produce a graphic novel. I worked with an editor and I was able to actually do chapter summaries of every single chapter in the graphic novel. It was meant to be about 200 pages with each chapter being its own short story, but then like culminating in an overarching plot that wraps up at the end. I had even thumbnailed out a bit large portion of the story when the company decided to close its doors and release the rights to what I had worked on back to me, which is a big relief, that's for sure. At that point, I had a lot of options. I was like, okay, this is back in my hands. I can, you know, shop it around to other comics publishers if I feel like it. I can take it to a crowdfunding platform and pitch the idea to the people and see if they want to give me money to work on it or I can take a webcomic approach and be doing it at my own pace and publishing pages online as I go. I even got to the point where I was like, making a spreadsheet of pros and cons for each option, but basically none of them felt right at the time. And like, as I mentioned before, comics take a super long time. So I'm not able to find time in my schedule to do anything that isn't paid work or work that is like pretty quickly going to provide a return. <laughs> So it got shelved, it's waiting for the right opportunity. It's definitely not off the table because I'm still really happy with a large part of what I wrote and what I've drawn so far. So I remain hopeful that that graphic novel will be completed someday. But here we are. It's not quite someday, but it is time for me to make another comic in the Space Case universe. So for Van Calf, I wanted to show up with a new comic and I did consider using some of the work that I'd already done on the graphic novel to do like a chapter one print edition type thing, but then I remembered what I was just talking about, which is not to release anything that isn't a self-contained story. So instead I pivoted and decided to just write something new, write a new caper, a new hijink. <laughs> Hijink, is that, is there like a single, can I single use hijink? So my new short story, it's about 24 pages. It's all about Tuna and Yo helping out a baker to get the baker's amazingly delicious treats out into the world. <laughs> I've already written it, I have thumbnailed it, and I am just starting on sketching now. And it is uh, the beginning of February. And so I <laughs> have a schedule to keep to get this thing done in time, printed and published 
for the end of May. So in order to provide you a little extra value today, I wanted to show you a little bit about my process to completing a comic. As I mentioned, I have made three graphic novels and a ton of other comic shorts, so I have a lot of experience. And the first thing I wanna say is that there are actually no rules to making a comic. You can do it like the way that I do it. You can do it your own way, as long as a finished comic appears at the end. No one's going to question your methods. Don't have to show your math on the page. The very first thing I want to show you is my ideas writing page. Um, you're welcome to pause this and zoom in if you can, if you would like to. But basically what this is, is me starting to explore ideas for my short story. So there are like three or four different story concepts on this page that are all very similar. They all kind of have this theme of like small business versus big business and each one is concepted around the idea of food so there's a bunch of different story ideas and what i did was just kept writing and writing and then if like while i was writing one if i had an idea for another one i'd finish that and then hop on and write down the next idea and i ended up picking my favorite from these ideas and going with that <laughs> And then here in my sketchbook, I just immediately started drawing the characters that I had been just developing on this page. So I have my little baker girl who is just so, so cute. And I wanted to design her little pastry that she is making in the story. I also have some sketches of my main character, Tuna. Uh, she, I just, I'm not like super happy with these drawings. I used to draw her all the time. And honestly, one of these days we'll go through some of my old sketchbooks and I'm just gonna, you're just gonna hear me like so sad over like, how good I used to be at doing comic related art like this, but I'm definitely feeling rusty. So this was just a beginning of a facial expression exploration. My God, that is a tongue twister. Um, and then onto the thumbnails. So, so between doing the concept ideas and getting to thumbnails, I do create what I call a page Beat, which is where I will break down all of the actions and the step-by-step -step of what the story is about and what happens in the story all the way from the beginning to the end. And then based on my experience and understanding of comics, I'm able to estimate how many pages I will need to use to get to the end of each little thing that needs to happen. And from there, I will create my page delineations and start thumbnailing. I do not create a script if I am working by myself or with an editor that doesn't mind <laughs> because I don't think in terms of words, I think in terms of pictures. So if I was to write something down, I would be translating this into words just for someone else to read if, and then only to do the pictures afterwards. So I just personally cut that step out completely. And here you go, you can see how I thumbnail. So as I go, this is like the like the page one and then like the page two. And what I will do is I will fill in and write the dialogue as I go. And this is a intuitive process because I feel comfortable with these characters and I know like how they would speak. And then I kind of have an idea of like the beginning, the middle of the end and everything that needs to happen. I can start writing with confidence and then as i move along if i want to jump back and like add a little bit of exposition or like a like a little bit of foreshadowing to what's going to happen um i can do that during this process and as you can tell <laughs> these drawings are not meant to be museum quality i am the only one that needs to understand what's happening here and so I don't bother refining anything to any great detail. Obviously I'm sketching in pen to just get the idea down as quickly as possible. In some instances like here where you can see, I do want to change the way that I did the panel. Um, I'll kind of like add an extra panel on the bottom. And I'll also think about visual gags at this point because visual gags, I'm often not writing into the script. So I do want my words to be funny, but I want my pictures to be funny too. So I'm starting to think about how to make my characters be expressive in a way that will make people laugh. So continuing on here, these are the rest of them. So basically I've spoiled the entire story for you. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. But it this is a very draining process. So I did do them in two separate chunks. I did half the story and then half the story. One thing that you should do is thumbnails. Um, however you want to do them, if you want to do them to more detail, if you want to like make them tighter 
go for it. Just make sure that you have your story sketched out in this really tiny way. I actually do for a long graphic novel, like a 100, 200 page story. I will do all of the thumbnails before I even start sketching the comic. It really helps me to just understand the scope of what I need to do and never lose track of the basic idea, which is, you know, it, it comes from the start. You wanna capture that like, what am I trying to say? You wanna capture that inspiration as early as possible. And then when you get into robot comic making mode, you always have this really like joyful starting point, if that makes sense. Some tips that I wanna give you. Uh, one thing that I try to do is to make sure that no two pages have the exact same top panel side to side. So if I have one panel here that stretches the entire length of the page, uh, the next page is going to have two panels at the top or three panels. And another tip that I like is trying to avoid having any of your characters be the same size uh, in different panels on the page. If you vary up the size of your characters through the page and the panels, you're gonna have a much more dynamic looking page and probably more dynamic panels as well. <laughs> These are just like two really small tips that you can remember. There's obviously a ton that goes into comics and one good way to learn about paneling is to take your favorite comic, like Space Case uh, 2018, and you go here and like do like boxes to imitate what I've done here. So like make your top box, there's a mini box, make this long box and then three boxes. And then same with this one, you've got a top box, a middle box, and then three boxes down here. And you'll start to see when you break that down, the different types of paneling layouts that your favorite comic artists are using. And you can start to just, you know, into it and learn how the comic page can flow based on the way that other people are doing it. Once your thumbnails and your story is completely put together, you can go to a concept art stage, um, especially if you don't have like your main character's design or anything like that. I am a little bit stubborn and lazy. And so I kind of do my concepting as I sketch the pages along, but maybe you really enjoy that particular step. So this is where I would tuck that in. But once you are ready to start actually sketching your pages, the main thing that I recommend is creating yourself a template for all of your pages. You <laughs> will need to learn about printing. Definitely if you intend to print your comic, just do some Googling in terms of like what kind of margins you might need to print. If you don't know what the word bleed means, you're definitely gonna wanna do some Googling because that's gonna ruin your life if you don't account for it at the get-go. And then you set up your document with all of the margins that you feel are going to be necessary. So you're gonna have like your full bleed, you're gonna have like your safe zone, you're gonna have like your outer page limit, and then you're gonna have, I have an extra one for the outline of the outermost boxes. Save that as your template, make a bunch of folders for your layers called like ink, color, sketch, template, <laughs> and open that file to create all of your pages going forward. You're going to save yourself a big headache if everything is just prepared before you even start sketching. And then yeah, you can start sketching. And there's no rules for this as well. If you want to have really loose sketches, that's cool. If you want to have tight sketches, that's also cool. Just as an example, here is the first page of this comic. It's the only one I've sketched so far. I was working on this earlier today, but I have a ton of other sketch pages that I'm just going to pop up around here from previous projects so you can see kind of like how I work on these. Another tuna tip is I actually do the lettering after doing the sketches because what this does is it will immediately become apparent where the speech bubbles need to be. And let me tell you, you will always underestimate exactly how much space your text needs. So if you lay your text in before you do any inking and coloring, you will still have time to adjust the sketches and the drawings before committing to anything and having to like redo stuff when you're putting the lettering in. Again, that's just the way that I do it. It's what works for me. Comics has no rules, but I'm just trying to give you some tips that might make things easier based on my experience and the mistakes that I have made in the past. <laughs> Once you are done with your sketching and lettering, you can go ahead, you can ink, you can color. Something to keep in mind is that if you are making a comic that has a very dark color palette, 
be careful not to make your pages too dark because if you do, when they go to print, they could get a lot muddier than you intend them to be. And as well, if you don't have experience with printing anything, do some research into the concept of RGB versus CMYK and join me crying on the ground when all of your purples, blues, pinks, greens become completely nuked as a result. If you take all of these pre-print tips to mind when you actually come to compile your comic for print, you're going to have a much easier time. The way that I do that is using the compile PDF function in Photoshop. It's pretty much the only thing I use Photoshop for at this point, so there's probably free programs that can do exactly the same thing. They essentially just turn your multi-pages PNGs into a multiple page PDF file that you can send to your printer of choice. Oh, and that reminds me, something I forgot to say earlier on is when you are doing your thumbnailing sketch and your scripting, keep in mind for print comics, uh, the concept of the page turn. So it should be that every odd page is um, the pre page turn. So every even page is the first page of a double page spread. And so keep that in mind. If you do want to have double page spread illustrations, they're going to need to be even number, odd number. And as well, if you have some sort of cliffhanger or reveal that you want to do as a little page gag, um, you're going to want that to be on a page turn. So keep that in mind. Obviously, I'm speaking as someone who makes print comics. I've never really been a webcomic person. I did have a webcomic back in the day called Butterpaws and Caddyland that was animated, which was part of why I wanted it to be a webcomic, but I think it only got to like 15 pages or something like that because I was like inking it on paper. That's another magnum opus that I would love to do again. That one's all about freaking cats, like a cat universe where cats rule and like this kid comes and because like his cat from Earth is like the chosen one, you know, like the chosen one trope from a story. And so the cat has to get taken to this cat universe and then his human friend is like tagging along. Like, why am I in this cat adventure? Anyway, I know this video isn't the most elegant. I did just want to take a chance to like, to like hop back into the comics world and just remind you guys that I actually have a lot of experience making comics and I should talk about it more here. I really hope you're looking forward to the progress of Space Case. I will be posting updates for my patrons over in my snack pack. Just as I lead up to releasing the comic, it'll be available as a digital download and a printed comic that you'll be able to buy sometime in the summer. And then obviously it'll show up probably here in the vlogs, which is kind of why I wanted to give it its own introduction so it didn't end up monopolizing an entire vlog. <laughs> If you have any more questions about making comics, maybe stuff that I can bring up in those vlogs in the future, stuff that I can chat about, please, please leave me a comment below. It's very helpful to know what you guys want to learn about, what you guys want to see the behind the scenes of, so I can tailor my stuff to give you the best content that I can. Consider liking the video if you did enjoy this little peek into my madness. You can go ahead and subscribe if you'd like new videos in your inbox every Sunday. I do vlogs. I do stuff like this. I do other stuff. Who's to say? But before I go, I just want to give a real quick shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. These guys are the people who are keeping these videos coming week after week, so thank them. Go ahead and thank these people in the comments because I couldn't do it without them. Some of them are subscribed at a dollar and they get extra videos, digital downloads, and podcasts. And some of them are subscribed for 10 or $25 to get mailable rewards. This month we are doing a greenhouse theme, which is a lot of fun. So I have a greenhouse sticker sheet. I have a greenhouse single sticker. I have a greenhouse print and another little sticker sheet surprise coming soon. But I love them all equally. And like I said, I wouldn't be here without them. So consider joining them to get your name in this fun scrolling list because it would mean a lot to me. But I know we can't support every creator we love online. So I just want to thank you for making it to the end of this video. I will be back next weekend with another something special. <laughs> no spoilers, but we have done one video on this theme so far. Can you guess what next week's video will be? We shall see. Stay sparkly, don't let the cruel world dull your shine, and I will see you next time.